Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to discuss an important feature implemented by Microsoft during the January 2020 Patch Tuesday, specifically a feature that relates to logging. By the way, any resource or article I reference can be found in the description below in the order in which I reference them. So I watched, as many of you probably did, the SANS webcast from Jake Williams and Johannes Ulrich covering the critical vulnerability within Crypt32 reported to Microsoft by the NSA. That is CVE 2020-0601. Or if you prefer, the silly little name associated with it is Chain of Fools, because for some reason, all Vulns must have a name. If you're looking for a recap, go watch that. If you're looking for help exploiting that vulnerability, you're at the wrong channel. Anyway, one of the biggest takeaways from watching that webcast was the discovery that Microsoft had implemented a call to a user mode API named CVE Event Write in the updated, patched version of Crypt32.dll. Microsoft states that this is, quote, a tracing function for publishing events when an attempted security vulnerability exploit is detected in your user mode application. Actually, the API isn't new. It dates back to 2016, but to our knowledge, this is the first time Microsoft has used it for its documented purpose. So what does it do? Well, this is the cool part. It creates an event. As you can see from this table, the event is written to the application event log. The source is audit-cve or Microsoft-Windows-Audit-CVE, and the event ID is one. In my testing, the source has always been audit-CVE, so I'm not positive under which circumstances you would see the other alternate source name. But after you have applied the January 2020 patches, any attempt to exploit CVE 2020-0601, which should of course be unsuccessful, will result in an event log being written that contains the following text. Possible detection of CVE, CVE-2020-0601 cert validation. This event is generated when in an attempt to exploit a known vulnerability, CVE-2020-0601 cert validation is detected. This event is raised by a user mode process. Now, let me pause for a second. As some of you on Twitter have pointed out, this is not the first time the string possible detection of CVE has been seen in Windows event logs. My research shows that a few instances were seen in the system event log as far back as several years ago via the Microsoft-Windows-Kernel-General source. But as far as I know, this is the first time it's been associated with the application event log and with the audit-CVE source. My hope is that it will continue to be consistently implemented via this provider as we move forward. And to be honest with you, I never even knew this was the thing until I started researching it. I'm guessing many of you didn't either, hence the purpose of this video. So you are centrally collecting and aggregating your event logs, right? Well, even if you are, there's a good chance you aren't collecting the application log or if you are, you may only be collecting a subset of it via various filters, such as event ID, source, and so on. Regardless, it's worth pulling in this one if you aren't already. Now, one interesting note is that Microsoft's technical bulletin, which will be in the description, states as of the recording of this episode, that quote, after the applicable Windows update is applied, the system will generate event ID one in the event viewer after each reboot under Windows logs slash application, when an attempt to exploit a known vulnerability, then it lists the CVE, cert validation is detected. So in my testing, the event is immediately written to the log and we'll see that when we get to the demo next. So either I'm misunderstanding what this means or it's incorrect. This website is what we're going to be using for this demo portion and it has an excellent write-up explaining the technical details of how the vulnerability works. In the article, the author provides a way to test to see if you are vulnerable. So first you visit a CA demo website so that the particular certificate is in the cache. And then right afterwards, you open a second URL, which should generate certificate errors if you're patched. So first we're going to take a quick look at Internet Explorer, Edge, Chrome and Firefox before applying the patch. We should see that IE, Edge, and Chrome 
will happily load the page without any errors. Firefox is not vulnerable because it doesn't rely on Crypt32. Then off camera, I'll patch the box, reboot, and we'll do the same thing again. This should result in certificate errors for those three browsers in addition to the logging of the attempt to exploit the vulnerability. As Rob Graham pointed out, hopefully Apple and other OS vendors will follow this example and also begin logging attempts to exploit known vulnerabilities. So let's begin. Okay, demo time. We're going to speed run through this by pasting in the CA URL and then right afterwards the test URL into each of the browsers and look at the behavior before we patch. So let's grab the top CA URL and paste it into IE, which should always work without an issue, and then the test URL. And you'll notice it says hello world and did not generate a cert error. Next, let's try the same thing in Edge. And here is the test URL being pasted in. You'll notice it works fine without any cert error. Next, we have Chrome, first the CA, followed by the test. And it appears Chrome works fine. Then lastly, let's try Firefox, first pasting in the CA, then the test. And as expected, it does not work. It actually says secure connection failed. Again, this is because Firefox does not rely on crypt32.dll and therefore is not vulnerable. Now let's go ahead and patch, reboot, and repeat the test again. And we're back. So let's go ahead and grab the CA URL, which should again work fine in IE, and now the test URL, which should fail, and it does. Notice the event viewer in the bottom right. The application log is selected and we're filtering on event ID one. Let's refresh it. Notice above the information message, we have three warning messages, which were generated at exactly the same time. They contain the text that we saw in the previous section. Again, the log name is application, the source is audit-cve, the event ID is one. And for whatever reason, we got not one, not two, but three warning messages when we attempted to exploit the vulnerability in IE. Moving on to Edge, we'll paste the CA URL followed by the test URL. It also fails. And if we refresh, we get one additional warning message as expected. Now let's go ahead and try Chrome. The CA URL should work as it did before, and the test URL should fail, but it didn't. That's weird. Let's go ahead and shift refresh and try again. There we go. So apparently it was just cached. And now if we refresh the event log, we should get one additional warning message, and there it is. So just like we expected, everything was generated right on time, right as soon as we attempted to exploit it. Now let's go back to Firefox just for the heck of it and paste in that test URL, which again fails. The point here is that it's not going to generate an event log because it never even tried to call that crypt32.dll library to begin with. So I am filtering, as I said, on event ID number one within the application log. The source is audit-cve in this example. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this episode. Just the fact that we now can leverage this in our environments to detect the attempted exploitation of this vulnerability. And hopefully in the future, Microsoft will continue to use this. This will definitely aid us as blue teamers or defenders or even forensicators in detecting and finding evil in our environment. So I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you found the information useful Maybe it's something you can go and apply right now in your enterprises. All of the links are in the description below, so be sure to check those out. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I will catch you in the next episode.